Thank you, uh, Elder Mary Lou Bourgeois, for your words. Being authentic to who we are is extremely important. We are gathered here in a city of beautiful people. It is Treaty 1 territory, homeland of the Ishnabeg Nation, homeland of the Nehiho, Dene, Dakota peoples. It is the homeland of the Métis Nation, the land of Riel, la terre de Riel, c'est le berceau de la langue de Molière, né ici sur les plaines. Winnipeg is also the home to thousands of Inuit people, and it is the home to each and every one of us, and we all live here together. I'd like to thank you for coming here today to spend time to hear policy ideas that have been put forward by the citizens of the city of Winnipeg for this mayoral election of 2022. Your voice truly matters. When one looks at the people of our city, we can see hundreds of thousands of people who all have the solutions to our most pressing issues. And we need to start listening to those solutions. We all want a better city, and many are willing to put the effort and time into making the city a better place. And Mayor Oral campaigns should always be about people. When we started this campaign, it was about us as a city. We face many challenges in our city, from homelessness to mental health, addictions, Having green policy, housing, jobs, community, infrastructure, roads, potholes, policing, firefighters, and paramedic services. My brothers and sisters, for too long we have let, been letting others who think that they know better tell us their solutions to the issues facing our city. People from away. People who sometimes don't know very much about the entire city, but only parts of it. And unfortunately, those solutions always seem to be the same old, same old. So let us take time to reflect than to act outside of that tired, worn-out box. We need to challenge how things are done and make sure things get done, and that's why we are here today. To build the city we want, children must be at the heart of its design. During the 2014 mayoral campaign, our, team first, our team's first announcement was to make Winnipeg a child-friendly city policy. Based on an existing worldwide initiative supported by UNICEF, and already adopted by other Canadian cities. A child-friendly city is a city in which the voices, needs, priorities, and rights of children and youth are an integral part of public policies, programs, and decisions. As in 2014, we as a community and a collective must stand firm on the commitment to build a child-friendly city because every decision the city makes, every policy or bylaw, ultimately impacts children and youth. We must place the well-being of children and youth at the center of the city's decision-making process. This must include how to best support the parents, grandparents, caregivers, and elders who nurture and raise our children. To build the city that we want, the children must be at the heart of its design. Right, Abigail? Mm -hmm. mm. Lors de la campagne municipale de 2014, les premières annonces que notre équipe a fait étaient de faire Winnipeg une ville aimée des enfants. Basé sur une initiative mondiale existant soutenue par l'UNICEF et déjà adoptée par d'autres villes canadiennes, une ville amie d'enfants et une ville dans laquelle les voix, les besoins, les priorités et les droits des enfants et des jeunes font partie intégrante des politiques publiques, programmes et des décisions. Comme en 2014, je maintiens fermement mon engagement à bâtir une ville amie des enfants parce que chaque décision prise par la ville Chaque politique et règlement ayant fin compte a un impact sur les enfants et sur les jeunes. We have three guiding principles which will guide the city's decision-making process to create a child-friendly Winnipeg. One, the physical environment, a community that through natural, built spaces, promotes safety and social connectedness, where children and youth feel safe, have freedom of movement and opportunities for play and imagination. Two. City Services, a community where all children and youth can access enriching, engaging programs and services that promote their healthy development regardless of their family's income or background. And three, Engagement, a community where children and youth are valued members who can actively contribute their time and their ideas to civic life. Building on existing programs and services. With a generational change in leadership, we must be more collaborative and work with council, including all levels of government, indigenous governments, and especially community members to enhance existing city programs and to services that benefit directly children and families. Three changes we, would, we should implement immediately. Customizing library hours. Public libraries are a network of family, child, and youth-friendly spaces offering year-round programming essential to development. 
The city should build on this important service by expanding and customizing library hours for when children and families can use it, specifically evenings and weekends. The Growing Block Parents Program. Block Parents is an organization of national volunteers who provide safe spaces for children in emergencies or when they feel unsafe. The simple presence of a block parent house on a street helps make a neighborhood safer. This effective community-based program is invaluable to helping keep our children safe and the city should work with them to support and expand their coverage in Winnipeg. This is a vision for the involvement of all our community into the well-being of our children. A free transit for children and youth. Starting in 2021, children aged 11 and under can ride transit for free. This program was put in place to make transit more affordable for families and encourage the next generation to choose transit. While a good start, we need to take this a step further and allow children and youth 17 and under to ride transit for free. This provides a financial break to families and invests in the next generation of transit riders, and it's also good for the environment. Le transport en commun gratuit pour les enfants et les jeunes. À partir de 2021, les enfants de 11 ans et moins peuvent utiliser le transport en commun gratuitement. Ce programme a été mis en place pour rendre le transport en commun plus abordable pour les familles et encourager la prochaine génération à choisir le transport en commun. Bien que ce soit un bon début, nous devrons aller en plus loin et permettre aux jeunes et aux jeunes enfants de 17 ans et moins de utiliser le transport en commun gratuitement. Cela offre un break financier aux familles et c'est un investissement dans la prochaine génération de usagers de transport en commun. Now, helping to create new memories. As part of a child-friendly Winnipeg, we are also proposing three concrete actions that go beyond what is currently offered. Two new aquatic centers. Winnipeg weather provides a very short season for the city's outdoor pools and splash pads. During the winter, families search for things to do with their children indoors. With those who can afford it, renting rooms at city hotels or destinations in Grand Forks with indoor water parks. It is time for all families to have affordable year-round access to state-of-the-art aquatic centers, centers that include swimming, fitness facilities, and a water park, like what we see in Steinbeck and Portage La Prairie. Winnipeg should aspire to more. So we must work together and move beyond making sim a simple talking of this great idea. It's time to build two aquatic centers for the families of Winnipeg and ensure that they are accessible and affordable. Des deux nouveaux centres aquatiques. Le climat de Winnipeg offre une saison très courte pour les piscines extérieures et les pâtes noires de la ville. Pendant l'hiver, les familles cherchent des choses à faire avec leurs, leurs enfants à l'intérieur. Ceux qui ont les moyens louent des chambres des hôtels de la ville ou dans des destinations comme la Grand Forche avec les parcs aquatiques intérieurs. Il est temps que toutes les familles aient un accès abordable toute l'année à des centres aquatiques à fin point de la technologie. Des centres qui comprennent des piscines, des installations pour conditionnement physique et un parc aquatique, comme on voit à Steinbach ou à Portage la Prairie. Nous allons travailler à construire des deux centres aquatiques pour les familles de Winnipeg et assurer qu'ils soient accessibles et abordables. More affordable dance. For children and youth, this one's for you, Abby, and all those young ladies out there. For children and youth, participating in dance has shown to be an excellent source of physical activity, a way to explore creativity and to build confidence. However, the high cost of dance programs can make it unaffordable for some. The city should work with community centers, private dance companies, and instructors to use existing facilities to create greater access for dance classes. Private dance classes and companies and instructors would be given preferential facility rates with the expectations that their savings would be passed on to program participants through lower registration fees and costs. The goal is to give greater access across the city to as many children and youth as possible regardless of their ability to pay. And community center charity status. Community centers rely heavily on direct funding from the city, with some taking on fundraising initiatives themselves to help with special projects or programs. While there are a few community centers which are registered charities and they are able to issue tax receipts, the vast majority are not. We will create a city-administered charitable registration program with the city taking a lead in registering interested community centers as charities. 
Once registered, the city would accept donations and issue receipts on their behalf of the community center, greatly enhancing their ability to fundraise and provide program. Many people and citizens in our community would like to acknowledge the innocent murder victims killed by two 15-year-olds in Point Douglas. This was a senseless act. And our hearts go out to the victims and their families. And while we cannot make excuses for the terrible crimes which were committed, as a city we must ask ourselves, where would we be if eight years ago we had put in place this policy? And where would we be eight years from now if we don't start now? This is why a child-friendly city policy is important. When one looks at the people of our city, we see hundreds of thousands of people with many of the solutions. We have so many challenges that we face right across the city, but we can actually do so much better. And it's time for that generational change in leadership to put in place a much more collaborative leadership vision. This is important because we need to bring together all levels of government at the federal, provincial, municipal levels, the health authorities, indigenous governments, community organizations, and most importantly, citizens. We need to challenge how things are done to make sure things get done. So let us make history together. Laissons-nous faire l'histoire ensemble.